Welcome to Rockstock Channel, the latest initiative of RK Equity, an advisory firm run by Rodney Hooper and myself, Howard Klein. In advance of Battery Day, less than two days away, I'm going to discuss a note I wrote called A Nickel for Elon's Thoughts in my Lithium Ion Bull. And Rodney's going to talk a bit about Lithium, which Elon also talked about or tweeted about in July. Why did Elon plea for mining companies to mine more nickel in his Q2 earnings call on July 22nd? What are the biggest constraints now? Well, I'd just like to reemphasize, you know, any mining companies out there, please mine more nickel. Because there's an impending shortage in a few years, as we've been arguing for months and years. EV battery plants could take up to one to two years to build, but mines take five, seven, or 10 years to build and are hugely capital intensive. Step number one, mining, takes way longer than basically all of the other steps. I mean, the best case scenario for developing a mine, absolute best case scenario is five years. But you're looking at 20 years to do exploration campaigns to develop a mine fully before that thing even starts to produce anything of value. And even when it starts producing, it may not necessarily be valuable to an automaker in the future. And because of that dislocation between the first step and the last step in the supply chain, we're starting to see some of these worrying trends like we have on the right-hand side of this page, where if you look at the lithium chemicals market for supply and demand, there's just no two ways to cut the story. We are gonna be in severe shortage of lithium. And there are similar charts for nickel and cobalt chemicals. Don't wait for nickel to go back to some long, some high point that you experienced some five years ago or whatever. Tesla will give you a con giant contract for a long period of time <laughs> if you mine nickel efficiently and in, in an environmentally sensitive way. But why are nickel miners like Vale instead shutting down mines rather than building them like they're doing in New Caledonia? Because nickel prices are low and they're quite volatile. Wood McKinsey, among several other widely followed forecasters suggest nickel prices must be at $20,000 a ton or $9 a pound in order to ensure an incentive price for the large volumes Elon is seeking. Is Elon really willing to pay for a giant contract for a long period of time at prices 70% higher than the last five years average nickel price? RK Equity keeps track of all the nickel producers and developers on its nickel scoreboard. You can see the impact Elon's message has had on creating speculative interest in developers hoping to become Tesla suppliers. Some of them have jumped two and four times in the last couple of weeks. The nickel industry is about 30 billion in revenue in total, approximately 2 million tons, which is 10 times bigger than lithium in dollar terms, seven times greater in volume terms, but it's quite small relative to aluminum, gold, copper, iron ore. In a July tweet, Elon uh, pulled off Nirvana's Lithium and kind of said, it's a great song, so uh, as he was thinking about Lithium. So I wrote about Nirvana Nickel in my note, A Nickel for Elon's Thoughts, to kind of pin down what I see as the critical factors I look for uh, in any nickel development company that might attract his attention. If it's in a good jurisdiction like the USA, I think that's good. If it's high grade, if it's profitable at current prices, it doesn't need uh, you know, prices to rise 50, 70 percent. Those are you know, nickel nirvana, in my opinion. I also show some red flags for companies which are much higher CapEx, which need much higher nickel prices. And uh, there's a lot of people out there promoting companies, which I, you know, you'd be just be very careful of these things, which I call pumper nickel. My good friends at Benchmark Minerals are hosting a uh, battery day event, post-Tesla battery day event on the 23rd, at which a number of nickel companies will be presenting, as well as some lithium and other interesting companies. I encourage you to uh, check that out. So what are the confirmations we expect to see on Tuesday? Well, we expect to see that Tesla is now able to manufacture cells in-house, potentially with an energy density of 300 watt hours per kilo, possibly even higher, and at a cost of $100 per kilowatt hour. That's enormous. That would mean 
Parity between electric vehicles and internal combustion engines on a cost perspective is definitely within grasp. And this is a big change from where we've been in the past. Historically, a lot of electric vehicles were sold in China rather than the rest of the world. They were particularly cost focus and LFP, variable quality and battery, but always centered around price and trying to compete. Now the world has changed. More electric vehicles are going to be sold in Europe, possibly than China this year, but definitely Europe and rest of the world will exceed China by some margin. And that's likely to continue in the future, given CO2 penalties that uh, are in existence in Europe. Uh, the ex-China markets, uh, driving range and, uh, and time to, f to charge are key uh, considerations for buyers. And we're seeing a lot more upmarket uh, offerings coming into those markets um, in the next couple of years. What does that mean? Well, from a cathode perspective, we're seeing a shift to the higher nickel cathodes. You've got GM and LG looking at doing a nickel, cobalt, manganese, aluminium, a, per, you know, a variation on what Tesla does with its NCA and uh, 811 coming out. Ford suggesting that SK Innovations will have a 9.5.5 NMC cathode. Above 65% nickel in the cathode, only lithium hydroxide can be used. It's below 65% is either carbonate or hydroxide. And we've seen that in the demand for battery quality hydroxide in the last year or two, and we're going to see a big uplift next year. Will Tesla's battery day reconfirm things? It looks as if the Roadrunner cell, which could potentially have a volume of 10 times that of the uh, existing 2170 cell is likely to be used in the semi, where, of course, um, battery weight, energy density linked to battery weight uh, are critical in terms of uh, payload that you can carry in the semi, and uh, it's also likely to have some application in the Cybertruck, which is a big and heavy vehicle. What else are we looking out for? Well, there's a million mile battery potentially coming up. That again has enormous uh, ramifications for vehicle to grid and the transition from an electric vehicle for being transport only to transport plus um, energy storage. If we all are only going to use electric vehicles for 150 to 200,000 miles, then one has 800,000 miles equivalent driving uh, range or, or capacity left to redeploy to charging and discharging the battery into the grid. We are charging using renewables and discharging and displacing much higher carbon emitting forms of energy like coal, natural gas. It's theoretically possible if you use it enough that an electric vehicle has a negative effective carbon emission over its life if you allow the offset. Thank you all so much for watching Rockstock Channel's inaugural video. If you liked it, please subscribe by clicking the button on the bottom right hand of the screen and the notification bell to alert you when new videos are published. Please also give a thumbs up and leave some comments or questions to help us improve this content going forward. Visit Rodney and me on Twitter, at RodneyHooper13, and I'm at Lithium Ion Bull. We're also prolific on LinkedIn, and you can find us there. And please draw your attention to the disclaimer, nothing that's written here or said in any of the videos or podcasts are financial advice.